Welcome to the Film Gallery, where you'll get a glimpse into the transformation of traditional art forms, from the tungsten lit screens of wire and kulit performances to the silver screens of Malay films during the heyday of local film production in the 1950s to 1960s. Like many other cultural forms of the Malay community in Singapore, these art forms are heavily indebted to traders, migrants, and traveling entrepreneurs from the Malay world and beyond, who brought their backgrounds and influences to bear upon the local cultural landscape. Some of the most popular names associated with these art forms, like Bangsawan star Kairudin and film starlet Maria Manado, came from afar and made it big in Singapore. Beyond this gallery, you will also find echoes and imprints of this history throughout Kampung Glam. Along Sultan Gate, just beyond the front gates of this museum, one could once catch a traditional Wayan Quillet performance produced by Javanese traders and migrants at Pondok Jawa. If one ventured further along towards the end of the street, one could also catch a film at the Alhambra Theatre or Marlboro Theatre located along Beach Road. These art forms thus coexisted alongside one another. In some instances, they mutually inspired one another. Narratives from Wayan Kulit or Bangsawan performances sometimes made their way onto the big screen. This was the case with the first Malay film to be produced in Singapore, called Laila Majnun. Let's now take a peek behind the Wayan Kulit projection. In front of you are six puppets that once would have been used and performed during a Wayan Kulit performance or otherwise known as a shadow puppet play. We're quite lucky to be able to see these puppets up close. In standing behind the screen, we're given a view that most wine Kulit audiences would not have been privy to. Instead, most audiences these days only get to see the shadows of these characters, as the dalang or storyteller enacts tales of fantastical heroes, brave princes, and mythical creatures. Wayan Kulit is an art form that has undergone a several thousand year transformation. We don't know when or how exactly it arrived in the Malay world, but it likely existed prior to the Islamization of the region. Till today, stories from Hindu epics like the Mahabharata and the Ramayana continue to be one of the most popular narratives told through Wayan Kulit, although these have been localized and adapted through local influences. The designs for these characters probably look quite different from the characters you see here today. The characters that you see here include the Prince Arjuna, the Clown Petruk, and the monster Prabhubhaka from the Mahabharata, as well as the characters Rama and Sita from the Ramayana. Each are identified by specific motifs and designs that tell us a little bit more about the character, even without us having to be familiar with the story. Arjuna, for example, is distinguished by his long and refined nose, which stands in contrast to the ghastly faces of the monsters, as well as the squat noses of the clowns. His limbs are long and his body lean, which hearken to the idea of halos, or fine, which describes something as not only physically elegant, but also refined in one's character. Finally, he is adorned by luxurious articles of clothing, which suggests his elevated standing in society. He's held up on sticks traditionally fashioned from buffalo horn, which allow the storyteller to handle and manipulate during the performance. Picture this, the year is 1956, and you are about to watch the film Hang Tua, based on a classic Malay folktale, which has just been released to local and regional acclaim. People are flocking in droves to catch it in the cinema, and movie has won awards and nominations in Hong Kong and Berlin. People would later refer to this period in the 1950s and 1960s as the golden age of Malay cinema. All this and more would not have been possible without this camera setup, consisting of an NC Mitchell model camera, a film canister, and a director's loud hailer, simulating the conditions of a film director's hot seat. The Mitchell camera was especially important because it was one of the few models at the time that could accommodate the pace and sophistry of mass film production during that time. The film's just about to begin. Let's make our way over to our seats. Imagine that you are sitting in the Alhambra Theatre, 
which is one of many names given to a popular cinema hall that was once located along Beach Road. The Alhambra Theatre was built in the 1910s and became the first air-conditioned cinema in the 1930s when it was taken over by the Shaw Brothers, who were an up-and-coming film production company owned by a trio of brothers who came from Shanghai. Shaw Brothers would later set up a film studio exclusively dedicated to producing local films under the banner of Malay Films Productions which would go on to produce many widely successful Malay films, some of which you'll see on the screen later. As you watch the films, be sure to take note of the names of the filmmakers and actors. The Shaw Brothers, as you'll see, were not the only international names involved in this thriving industry at the time. Producers roped in international talents, including notable film directors from India, such as B.S. Rajans and B.N. Rao to be a part of these productions, making it a truly multicultural effort. Now sit back, relax and enjoy the films. <laughs> 